What's going on? Today we're going to talk about operating agreements, holding companies and operating LLCs and how you should set all this up. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Hammering, your hustling godfather, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu, where we will teach you how to start a business. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe. There has been a lot of confusion about operating agreements. Now, <clears throat> there are a few ways that you can set this up. You can integrate your operating agreement into your articles of organization, or you can have a separate document. Now, what is an operating agreement? An operating agreement spells out exactly who is doing what. If you're a single member entity, it spells out your co contributions, whether they're cash or not. Like say you put $50,000 into the business cash money. This would be included in your operating agreement. I like to include this in the articles of organization because it creates a stronger company and it spells everything out and it also makes things clear because typically you can do one, one like I said you could do it two ways you could do a separate operating agreement that is aside from the LLC or you can embed the operating agreement into the articles of organization let's say you have a partner and what you would do in your operating agreement or your combo hybrid because the reason I like to do it in articles of organization is it spells everything out very clearly and this is public record. Now, if you are doing something a little esoteric where you don't want anyone to know what's going on with your company, you would have a separate operating agreement aside from the LLC and this would not be in the articles of organization. However, you know, let's say you're a single member entity and you put $5,000 into your account. You would put your name, you would put the name of the LLC, all of this stuff into the operating agreement and spell out exactly what you want to do. And this is one of the cool things about starting a business in the United States of America. You can put in whatever you want. You can put in that we're creating such and such company to do what, what, and ultimately in five years, we're going to turn this into a trust fund for the kids. You can spell all that out in the operating agreement. Uh, one of the biggest issues with operating agreements is you have unlimited choice and people are not used to having that kind of leeway. People are not used to being able to dictate these things. And it's, you know, this is why you got to develop the hustler's mindset an ownership mindset, a business mindset, because, you know, lately I've been putting up some stuff about child support and some of the women just didn't like it and it's like, oh, I can say this and I've deleted some of their comments because if you were watching the complete video, you would have seen a 50-50 solution, which is a great deal for the kid, you and the mother. And, you know, just stop being mad because there are legal ways and the operating agreement is uh, one of the things you could do. There are legal ways that you could use corporate law to offset family law and not be paying these ridiculous child support amounts. Facts. This has worked for me in my previous situation and it worked for me in another situation. Because once again, as a business owner, you're taking on the brunt of the world. You have all of these doubts, you have all these, these people coming after you and that's your money. Nobody should be able to come just take your money without your permission or without you being like, okay, I'm cool with this. No, 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 no. It shouldn't be like this. And this is one of the reasons that you got to get yourself a holding company, an operating company, and have the operating agreement embedded into your articles or organization, or have a separate operating agreement to make sure your stuff is dress right dress because if you want to fight this war, and if you're in this situation, because I, I have a lot of people who are in this situation who are paying onerous child support, and they don't understand that one of the things that they need to do is to go out 
and establish your own corporate identity. Once you establish your own corporate identity with an operating agreement, man, you, you regain power that you lose as an employee. You gain leverage that you just don't have as an employee in the courtroom. So one of the things that you should do is before you start filling out the paperwork for your articles of organization, you should write down what your company's doing. Because this is one of the reasons I'm, I'm about like my uh, holding company is for a media company. This is what Mac Daddy Media is. We are a media company and we do educational products. All this stuff is in the holding company articles organization and they're also in the operating company articles organization. You got to be, you know, because this is how you keep your corporate veal from being pierced by being very, very specific and setting up your bank accounts correctly. Once again, if you're a business owner and you only have corporate bank accounts, you don't have a personal bank account, you're leaving yourself wide open for injury because let's say something happens and someone starts stooping around and they find out that you don't have a personal, you know, personal checking account, you co-mingling funds, player. You have automatically breached the, the, the uh, distinction between your personal life and your business life. You should write corporate checks from your business accounts into your personal accounts to take money out the company in a legal, non, you know, you don't give up any of your rights. But the operating agreement is not as mysterious or as tricky as people think it is. It's just clearly spelling out who does what, who's responsible for what, who put X amount of money in the company and what their role in the company is. Uh, in my articles of organization, the operating agreement, Howard, I have that I get to make all financial decisions for the company. But I don't own the company. I own, you know, I only own 5% of the company. But I get to make all financial decisions because this is a position that I can enjoy until I depart the great earth and move on to the next phase without ownership. And one of the reasons I know about this is um, one of the guys that they own part of Peachtree Center. And I remember, and this was when I was selling office furniture and this guy, Richard Bowers, he comes up and he says, hey, I'm Richard Bowers, I own the building. That's a baller thing to say, I own the building. Welcome to my building. Well, he's into it with other partners, but he, due to the way they set up the operating agreement, he got to collect the rents and he got to manage the property. He got a lot of money doing that. So ownership, you know, dictate, you know, cause essentially um, the way everything is set up that, you know, my daughter's gonna get everything after I pass on. She's already on the paperwork. She's already, in line she's already has all of this stuff set up and the reason that you know i can prevent her it you know she never would screw me but if, I, if she wanted to she couldn't do it because of the way that the articles agreement or the and also the articles of organization are written in a strategic manner to prevent any kind of thing. And you know, when you go to the bank and open up your business checking accounts, they are gonna go to the Secretary of State and they're gonna pull it up and they're gonna look at it themselves and see if you're authorized to own checking accounts and put stuff up. But I would say the best way is for you to integrate your operating agreement with your articles or organization. That's gonna make it much longer and you know, most places they have this area where you can put additional language and that's what you should do. Because I guarantee you, IBM, Apple, Amazon does not have flimsy articles of organization. They've got a lot of things going on. And you know, if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and find out what states that these companies were um, registered in and go ahead and look for yourself. <laughs> because one of the big things is with doing this is you give yourself the ability to create a financial entity. 
it's like a person except it's not born. The minute that you go ahead and file your articles of organization, you're creating a financial entity. And the more care and consideration that you take to form this financial entity, the stronger it will be. Like I was working for this company and this guy inherited a company from his father that was 35 years old. It's 35 years old. He, he inherited a 35 year old company baller move right there. And one of the things that you have to understand is you can set this stuff up for your kids. You can actually, one of the things you can do is you can put a value on the company and every year you give your kid X amount of shares of the company. And you know, over a period of time, you can gift them the company tax free. So there, there's so many ways to do this and also set this up because one of the things that you do, and also for those of you who are interested in the Hustler LLC, I've updated that and there is more information for men. Once again, I, I will go into this bill. This channel was designed for men. You know, if, you, if you're a woman, you come here, you like the content, you like the information, awesome. But this channel was designed for men because of the hardship of the unfairness of the brut the brutal legal beatdown I went through. And I'm just informing other dudes of their options and how they can circumvent certain things that are coming their way. I went through the fire. I lived in the boarding house. I was homeless all due to a bad marriage. And I will take responsibility because if I had saved money, if I hadn't diverted all the resources to the family, I would have never been in that situation. And one of the things that you got to understand is I'm for the fellas because, you know, I have a video. This channel exists because there are no social programs for men. They have shelters for women and children. They, they have all type of resources for women and children. Single man, you are out on your own. And people look at you like you're a single man. You should be able to take care of yourself. And we do not look at women like that. It's like, oh, she got kids. She needs help. Or she's a woman. She needs help. But as a man, you stand on your own two feet. Don't be a bum. Work hard. Take care of yourself. And as someone who has fallen who was in homeless, who was in a bad situation, men need help as well. And that's why this channel is the way it is because, you know, uh, I deleted a lot of your comments because y'all were talking that smack and you were displaying attitudes that I had placed, that I talked about in the video. That, you know, one woman said, you know, you're trying to get over on child support. She feels that whatever the law says that you should get she feels entitled to that money. Entitled. I don't have to do anything with the law says I get X, Y, and Z. That's what I need to get. And once again, here, uh, the programs and the things I set up, you can mitigate that. And, you know, once again, I always said, make sure you take care of your kid. Make sure your kid has anything. And I also said in the same video that the 50-50 custody solution was the best thing for all parties involved. And they didn't want to hear that. They like being in power. They like having the authority to say, you going to give me this child support or I'm going to put you in jail. I had a friend, uh, somehow the paperwork got messed up and it was like one child support one was late. His ex-wife took him to court and she said, I want him in jail. It was just late. He wasn't like behind. He wasn't in the rears. And the judge said, I'm not going to put him in jail. He was just like two weeks late. You know, I got women in here who haven't been paid in years. I'm not putting this man in jail. And she was like, I want him in jail. Understand that good man. This was my same friend who used to make $200,000 and his child support was based for one kid on 200 K. And now his child support has been over and his ex-wife's standard of living has went down. She's struggling. 
she's struggling. So once again, I think the, the best situation, and this is something that you can enforce. My friend who was a doctor, he and his wife was a doctor and he went and did it and he fought for his rights and he got 50, 50 custody. And you know, he, he got lax on the insurance and she came after him for $5,000 and his ex-wife makes almost $400,000 a year. It wasn't about the money. She had a point to prove. And a, a big part of this is understanding the female psychology of dealing with these situations when divorce and separation occurs and what happens with the kids. Now, fortunately, in my friend's state, you know, the kids are in high school. They've come along fine. You know, both parents are doctors. They're doing well. And, you know, he's just just the craziness that a woman will put you through because of the positional leadership role that she's placed into by the courts. Once again, my dudes, get yourself a holding company, an operating company, set yourself up to reclaim power because the courts are not set up to deal with this. They're set up because the fishnet is like, to catch all the fish who have jobs. They're not set up for business owners. They're not set up. This is why high profile, high net worth divorces take years because they're not set up for this. So what you can do is take those high power tactics and bring them to yourself and be able to deal with your situation. Because like I said, the Hustlers up, uh, LLC has been updated. It is expressively for men. It includes the child support course. It includes some uh, reference material. And one of the things you have to understand is no one cares if you're suffering if you're a man. No one cares. You are just out here suffering. You know, you may have a girlfriend, your mom, your dad, they may care. But society at large, mm-mm. Yet we have movies based upon men dying to save female lives that they don't even know. So that, that's a whole nother little trope. But once again, fellas, you need to start a business. You need to get out of that W-2 income and you, you know, reclaim your power and reclaim the choice to allocate your masculine resources the way that you want to. Because there are many of you, the, the big thing with child support is they just take it. You don't have no options in it. And we live in this Me Too era where women have the option to go back decades and say something happened because they changed their mind. But for some reason, men don't have those same kind of uh, leeways and abilities. But essentially, the operating agreement is very simple. Once again, you can have it as a separate document spelling out what you and if you have partners, what your roles are, what you bring to the table, contributions into the company, or you can integrate it into your articles organization. And you can even put articles organization and operating agreement, which is what I did with mine. So for if you need any help, all the links to the art of holding, the Hustlers LLC and all this other stuff are right below. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. And ladies, chill out. Because if you don't, delete, 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 delete.